Hello everybody and a happy Easter to you whether you're watching this on Easter morning or whether you're watching it some other time. We are all Easter people and today is a day of great celebration in the Christian faith. I spent a day at the Presbyteral Synod yesterday um, which is a particular treat for Methodist ministers and yesterday was a bit of a strange experience because it was the final Presbyteral Synod with our current Chair of District and it was strange because you find yourself suddenly sitting there thinking everything's changing this is not going to be the same soon and whilst I was there I also recognised that by this time next year when I attend the next Presbyteral Synod I will not be the Superintendent Minister in the Ipswich Circuit but I will have moved on to Pastures New and I became blissfully aware yesterday as I sat talking with colleagues that there is a significant amount of work to be done between now and August when we move from here in preparing churches for a different kind of future and preparing our lives as we prepare to move elsewhere. I, I find myself thinking that that must feel a bit like that first Easter. We, we have started our service today, if you've used the printed order of service by singing once again that brilliant hymn for Easter Day, Christ the Lord is risen today, Alleluia, and we all get stuck into the celebration that Christ, who once was dead, is now alive and reigns supreme. And too right, we should rejoice on this day of all days. But, as we read the Gospel lesson for today, we recognise that the events of Easter marked one of the biggest changes in humankind that we have witnessed in our lives. And it doesn't start with celebration. It starts with that incredible feeling of loss. Possibly most of us who are sharing in this time of worship at some point in our lives have felt the pain of losing somebody that we love dearly. Somebody that we've got used to having around. Somebody that has really mattered to us. And on that first Easter morning, we see Mary Magdalene absolutely lost in grief, feeling the pain of losing somebody she loves. She had stood at the foot of the cross and seen the last breath of life. She had witnessed the agonising death of Christ and on Easter Day she didn't go celebrating the risen Christ. She went with that pain in her heart just to be close to him, close to the place where his body lay. Today she may well take flowers and lay them at the entrance to the tomb as her final act of love. And so Easter Day begins with that incredible feeling of loss. 
And I think we feel that in change. Whenever change happens, no matter what it is, we feel that pain of loss. There is something about losing what has gone before and facing life in a different way. And that is not easy. But then it changes very, very quickly. Because when she gets to the tomb, the stone is rolled away. She doesn't think about the consequences of that. She doesn't think about what has happened. The next stage is a feeling of panic. My goodness, what are we going to do now? And her reaction is, she runs straight away to see Peter, the one who has been close to Jesus. She needs to tell him what she has just witnessed. And for most of us, when change does not go in the way that we are anticipating, our first reaction is panic. We're in that situation in this circuit at the moment where I am moving on and we don't have anybody to come and replace me. And our first reaction is one of panic. What are we going to do now? How's this going to all work? And we scratch around trying to think how on earth we can put this right. And all we want to do is desperately go back to how things were and and so on this easter day we need to remember that feeling of panic and even when peter and the beloved disciple arrive at the tomb it isn't all over because you see they don't know what's happening and there is confusion as they look into the tomb and they see things that don't make sense the grave clothes are there folded they're, they're left in the place where the body had been what's that all about where has he gone has somebody taken him there are a whole load of unanswerable questions and there's confusion that builds into the situation and that's the same as us when change happens how is this going to work what do we need to do how can we face life that looks so very different and it is a challenge for us and we need to remember that confusion and it's in that place that Mary, crying, is in the garden. She doesn't know what's happening. She doesn't know where she turns from here. And she turns and sees the gardener. <coughs> and all she wants to know is, where is he? What has happened? What's going on? And then she hears those words. And you see, Jesus has been there. He's right next to her. <coughs> and in that moment, we catch our first glimpse of the glory of Easter Day. And that is the point when we can start to celebrate. That is the point. <coughs> when we know that even death has not constrained him, the Jesus who once was dead is alive and he's there. He's talking to her. He's guiding her. He's preparing the next stage of the journey. So what does that mean to us today on Easter Day 2024? As the Ipswich Circuit tries to figure out what we do now, there is that feeling 
of loss and how do we cope in life with loss? How do we cope when things don't feel to work the way they used to? There is a feeling of panic. How on earth is this going to work in the future? Can it function now with a reduced level of staff? And so we try to work through that panic and we work through the confusion of understanding what the possibilities are and how we can make them work. But you see, the key point to all this is to turn to Jesus. As Mary turned to Jesus in the garden that first Easter morning, we turn to Jesus. We seek his guidance. We seek his comfort. We say, we are ready to go where you will take us. And we are prepared to face change in the knowledge that whatever we do, however we work, God is with us. And that is why this day of resurrection is so vitally important. That is why we can call ourselves Easter people. Amen.